Okay, so we have these two vectors, v and w. And the question is, how can we find the set of all vectors that are orthogonal, right, just means perpendicular, to both v and w? So before we jump in and use a whole bunch of numbers and calculate it out, um, let's do a quick thought experiment. So imagine, well, first of all, these two vectors, right, they both start at the origin, and then they are a little ray, a little arrow that points to these, these two points in three-dimensional space. So imagine that you have, imagine that you could represent these two vectors with pencils. So you take the pencils and you touch their erasers together, and, um, and they don't have to be the same length, the pencils, but the erasers touch each other, representing the fact that these two vectors both start at the origin. And then you kind of, you no matter how you twist or turn or rotate the two pencils, um, you can always take a third pencil and touch its eraser to the first two pencils erasers and orient the third pencil in a way such that it is orthogonal to the first two pencils. So hopefully you're seeing this in your head too. But that's what we're going to find. And then once you get that sweet spot where that third pencil is orthogonal to both the first and second pencil, you can change the length of that pencil. You can make it longer. You could you can make it shorter. You could like flip it completely, like scale it by negative one. And then it would still be orthogonal to V and W. And so uh, that's what we're going to find is that the, the solution set, like all the, all the vectors orthogonal to V and W are going to be the span of one vector because it's going to be a line. So let's jump in. How do you actually do this? Um, we're going to define a generic vector x that takes the form. It's going to be in three dimensions too. So it's going to take the form x1, x2, x3. And this vector x we're saying has to be orthogonal to both v and w, meaning x dot v has to equal 0 and x dot w has to equal zero. And you can see that this is going to give us a system of two equations and three unknowns, x1, x2, x3. So let's write that let's write those two equations out. So here are those two equations. I, I literally just did the dot product, you know, by its definition of x dot v. So I got um, x1 times 6 plus x2 times negative 2 plus x3 times negative 12. And that we're saying has to equal zero because x we want it to be orthogonal to v. So that's how I got this first equation. And then I do the same thing with x dot w, and I get this second equation. And notice, this is two equations with three unknowns. And we've been solving these things all semester long. So how do you find the, the solution set to this system of two equations and three unknowns? Well, you can put it in an augmented matrix. So let's do that. OK, so here's our augmented matrix representation of the system of equations. And um, you guys have come a long way since you first started row reducing things like this. right? So you guys could tell me right away there's at least going to be one free variable because you have two equations and three unknowns is there going to be one free variable or two well then you have to do a little bit more thinking but you you guys know that since v and w were um they're not scalar multiple multiples of each other clearly um and so that means that there's only going to be like one line that's mutually orthogonal to v and w if v and w were scalar multiples of each other then try to picture this you could have a whole plane. So if V and W, this is a little bit of a tangent, but that's okay. If V and W were scalar multiples of each other, right? So if this is V and this is W, then you could have a whole plane like this. Any vector in this plane, this vector, this vector, this vector would be orthogonal. Here's a right angle mark, would be orthogonal to both V and W. But as the vectors are given, v and w are not scalar multiples of each other, and so there's only going to be one line of vectors that are mutually orthogonal. So let's go ahead and row reduce this matrix and find our solution to the system of equations. So now we've made it all the way down to reduced row echelon form. Now you guys know the process. You can just write the solution set in parametric vector form. We get x1, right? This is the x1 column, x2 column, x3 column x1 equals, I move the negative 5 fourths x3 to the over, over to the other side, and I get 5 fourths x3, x2 is equal to, I move this positive 9 fourths over to the other side, I get negative 9 fourths. So don't forget that that sign is going to change. Okay, I saw a lot of people make that mistake on the midterm 3. So x2 is negative 9 fourths x3. And then lastly, x3 doesn't 
the x3's column doesn't have a pivot, so x3 is a free variable. So we say x3 can be anything we want it to be. This all means that our vectors x, which were we were defining to be uh, orthogonal to both v and w, this is what we want. We want to get a collection of all our x vectors. Our, our x vectors, which we defined up here to be x1, x2, x3, take the form, given this parametrization, x3 times 5 fourths, negative 9 fourths, and 1. So any, so here's our third pencil. Do you guys remember? Any, um, any scalar multiple of this vector is going to be orthogonal to both v and w. So that's the long way to do it. And uh, here's a shortcut. It's really not that much of a shortcut. It just saves you the hassle of doing like this stuff up here. Basically, if you have a set of vectors, um, let me let me write out an, an example problem. So in general, if you want to find the set of all vectors orthogonal to a set of vectors, um, like if you had more than two or just any arbitrary number of vectors, then the solution, the process is very simple. You put, um, you make an a, a matrix. For some reason, we always call the matrices A. You go like this. You put it as row vectors in this matrix. V1, V2. So you transpose the vectors and you put them as the rows of a matrix A. Dot, dot, dot. Vn. Right? This is the last row. And then you find, so then the solution, the, the set of all vectors orthogonal to v1, v2, dot, 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 vn, is the null space of A, right? And let's check, make sure that's what we did earlier. We had these vectors v and w, and look, we put it in this augmented matrix like this, where we turn them sideways and smush them together, and we get this uh, matrix A, 2, 2, 2, 6, negative 2, 12, and then by row reducing with the zero vector as our augmented column, we're finding the null space of that matrix A. So that's, and but this is where it comes from, right? Is you, is you set up a system of equations by taking the dot product of some general vector X with each vector in your set, and then you get that system of equations, you put in the matrix and, and, and solve for it. And, uh, but this is the shortcut. So if you wanna memorize this, go for it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.